Have you ever wanted to make some really cool, fun, pew-pew, Star Wars-type lasers using sound synthesis? Well, then you found the exact video to show you how to do that. Okay, so the basic of how to make this type of sound is quite simple, and you can use literally any software, synthesis software, to do this. I'm going to use Isotope Iris 2, and I'll get into why in a second, but if you have any kind of synthesizer plugin that you personally know how to use, then you can use it and achieve the same results. This is really straightforward stuff. Now, oh, Iris is a really cool, unique tool. Uh, we're not even going to really touch the surface of what you can do with it. So if you want to know all about it, Isotope has a whole video series that takes you through literally every feature in Iris, and I highly recommend checking that out if you want to know more about Iris. But we're using Iris because it is a really flexible, modular, sample-based synthesizer. So that allows us to ro load real-world samples, which is something I'll do towards the end of the video. But we're going to start out doing just some more basic, straightforward synthesis-style stuff, again, that you could do in any synthesizer plugin, even if it's not sample-based. So you can see right here I've loaded up Iris, and I'll kind of walk through what I'm doing with Iris as we go. Um, but the first thing we need to do is load a sample. So we're going to load a sine wave, and we're just going to pull this clean digital sine wave. So if you're using an actual synthesis plugin, you could just use a uh, oscillator to generate this. So because Iris is sample based, we're using a sample of a sine wave, but with a uh, actual digital or analog synthesizer, you would have an oscillator generating a sine tone or a tone of some kind, but because this is sample based, we're using a sample. But anyway, I can use my MIDI keyboard and play this sample. Okay, so you can see I've got my plugin over here doing all my processing, and then I've got a frequency analyzer over here just to show you what's going on frequency wise. So, right now, the main thing that's affecting our sound is the envelope. So you can see right here I've selected envelope 5, which is by default tied to our gain. So this envelope is basically altering the sound of our uh, sine tone over time. So anytime I press a key, it'll follow this envelope. So if you're not familiar with synth plugins and how envelopes work, we have our attack, decay, sustain, and release. So our attack is how long it takes the sound to rise up to its peak level after I press the key. The decay is the decay down from the peak level, and then as I hold the key, it sustains out, so our sustain controls how loud the sound is as it's sustaining, and then our release is how long the sound takes to fade away after we let go of the key. So again, if I hit the keys, you can kind of see that attack and release. So for example, if I were to completely get rid of my sustain, Now, even though I'm holding down the keys here, the sound immediately fades out. It doesn't sustain at all. So we're going to start right here. Uh, we're going to keep our attack nice and fast. We're going to keep our decay. Right now it's at 1,000 milliseconds or one second. We're just going to leave it there and live with that. And I'm going to go over here actually to my first envelope, and I'm going to set up the exact same thing for now. So we have these different envelopes we can tie to different things in Iris. So we're just gonna we're gonna use this first one, and again for now we're gonna set it to the same things as our gain envelope. So now I can take this envelope, and what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna pull it over here and attach it to our. Uh, this is a pitch control. So now our env this envelope here is controlling our pitch here. So if I play. You can hear we're already starting to get a little bit of a laser blaster sound effect. And if I want to tweak this, I can affect kind of the finish pitch. And then I can also affect how wide of a range this will affect the pitch over. So we got that going. And now I'm going to add some texture to the sound. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to enable over here, this master effect distortion, and I'm going to bring up distortion. So distortion is, this is harmonic distortion. I have a whole video on harmonic distortion if you want to know all the ins and outs, but basically what this is doing is this is distorting the signal, which uh, adds harmonics to the signal. It makes the more signal more complex and adds more layers to it. Um, so we're going to bring up the distortion just to add some more to the sound. <coughs> 
So now you can hear we're getting kind of this edgier, more detailed, not detailed, more complex sound, I guess. So without the distortion. And you can hear we're already getting pretty close to a nice, cool laser sound effect. But we need one more layer or one more element that's really going to help sell this. So that is a filter. So this is literally just a like a standard EQ filter if you're familiar with those. But we're gonna use a low pass filter. I'm gonna use this Tokyo low pass. This thing is like perfect for laser sound effects. It's like that's what it was designed for. So we're gonna use this Tokyo LP. We're gonna crank the resonance. So the resonance is, so this is a low pass filter. That means it cuts out all the high frequencies. It lets the low frequencies pass. And there's a cutoff where the filter starts to uh, get rid of those high frequencies. If you have a resonant filter, what happens is the filter actually resonates at the cutoff frequency. So it actually boosts the sound at the uh, cutoff frequency before it starts to cut off the sound. And that creates this interesting sound, especially when we add movement to it. So we're gonna take this exact same envelope we used for our pitch here, and we're gonna tie this to the cutoff of our low pass filter. So now, uh, that's a bit too high right now, so we can lower that. Maybe make it a bit less drastic. And there we go. We have a really nice, simple, straightforward laser sound effect. So if you want to make a laser sound effect using synthesis, this is all you need, really. A envelope tied to pitch and gain and a resonant low-pass filter and maybe some distortion or something to bring it all together, and you get this. But maybe, you know, you want to... Actually, I should point out, you can bring down the pitch a ton once we add the distortion to give even more tone to it. But now, from this basic level, we can start manipulating things. So let's go back to our original envelope. And right now, every pew pew sounds the same, but what if we bring up the sustain again? Now we can hold the key to add a little bit longer tail. We can also change the decay. Maybe we want the shorter decay. Or maybe short release. I kind of like that. So we're kind of changing our tone. Now what if we want to make our pitch happen a lot faster? Uh, not quite. What if we make it way longer? Interesting. We could bring up the sustain if we wanted. But the point is we can kind of manipulate and start messing with all these parameters to give us some different tones. Now, the reason I used Isotope Iris for this, partly because it's really cool, I just enjoy Iris, I think it works really well, but again, we can load real world samples. So let's kind of bring our parameters kind of back to what they were originally. That nice sound, maybe bring the pitch up just a touch. And now let's try loading some real world samples. So I'm gonna clear the sample and I'm gonna load a sample. So let's start with some of the ones that are built in. So Maybe we'll go to, uh, let's say, instruments. Let's load a flute sample, nice mellow flute. And let's play that. And we now have a nice new interesting texture. OK, let's clear that. Let's try something a bit more out there. Uh, voice, uh, male vowel. Let's try that. Nice, interesting new texture. Um, let's try one more. Actually, another thing I'll point out here is that you can use different uh, sounds. Let's try a mini moog saw and let's get rid of the distortion. I'll just show you. It's a bit more muted, but these uh, other wave types have some harmonics built in. So uh, you don't really need distortion on them. Actually, I'll add distortion. You can add distortion on them. 
But because these different wave types have different harmonic structures, they can create some interesting tones. But let's clear that sample and I'll load, um, let me load something that I have from my library. I'll actually load, this is a sound sample from my uh, sound effects library for February, uh, which you can get through my Patreon if you want. But it's uh, some nice wood creaking. So let's run that through our uh, chain that we've got here and see what that sounds like. <laughs> That's got a nice tail on it. I might actually, uh, another cool thing about Iris is that you can kind of focus on a particular area. So let's select kind of some of this tail here that you can see in the spectrogram. <laughs> And that nice rubbing, creaking sound that's in the original file, you can't even really tell it's there, but it's actually giving us some interesting texture. Well, let's let's try this part of the waveform here. Really cool. And, you know, you could load literally any sound sample in here pretty much, and as long as there's some sound to start with, you can get these really cool, unique sounds. And, you know, you can play around with things. Maybe let's cut out the distortion. We could try... A uh, different low pass, slightly more subdued sound, uh, try that one, and none of them are really good. Like I said, Tokyo low pass, it's like it was designed for making these laser sounds, it works really well. We can bring our pitch down even more, or up. The point is there's just a ton of stuff you can do to get some really cool laser sounds and when you build out a chain like this you can basically just start with your basic chain and then just start manipulating parameters and just go crazy with it and maybe you're doing like a nice Star Wars uh, fan film or something and you need 20 different laser sounds and a bunch of variations of each laser sound. This is a great way to just get the starting point and then just start manipulating everything and you can build out a ton of sounds really quickly and really easily and it's really cool. Like I said, this this basic effect, the basic part of it is stupid simple and easy. Any synth plugin can do it, uh, especially any subtractive synth. That's basically what this is, is subtractive synthesis. Any, any synth plugin can do this and it's just a real quick, easy, fun way to make some really cool, fun sound effects.